I mean, you're you're muted. You're muted. I can't hear you. Down at the lower right is a microphone, or lower left is a microphone, and if you click on it, it should be able to hear you. Nope. There it is. Okay. Got it? Okay. Is that good? I can't hear you yet. Oh, you wait. Can. I've got my... Okay. I should be able to hear you now. Okay. Can you Great. hear me? Yes. Okay. Good. Jeez. I need some techie help here. <laughs> yeah. So, how has it been going with your uh, with your uh, efforts on on all the i i project i set project the enterprises? Uh, You've been I don't busy. know. What, I don't know what kind of contributions have come in from from the concert, but uh, today was the last day, so uh, it'll be up on YouTube, and I think. Uh, Leslie can uh, handle the the publicity from this point on. Uh huh. So you'll be a little freer. Well, you've been busy. That's really nice of you to do that. That's a great well, background you got there. That's yeah. That's a a glacier in Iceland. Yes. Um, from the New York Times article that Carol Sontag pointed to. Yes, I read um, that. I read that. That was great. Wasn't that Greenland? I thought she said it was Greenland. Oh, Gre Greenland rather, yeah. Yeah, okay. Anyway, it's beautiful, but it's sad to seeing. When we were in Antarctica, we, we had a, a glacier calve, right? As I was getting out of a zodiac and I got pushed by the wave onto the shore, onto my knees. <laughs> wow. So it was a great story when I had to go to the doctor back home and tell them my story. He hadn't heard, heard one quite like that before. Uh -huh. and, and you were aware when that happened? Uh, I'm sorry? Did you say Iceland? Yeah, no, uh, Antarctica. Antarctica, okay, Yeah. cool. Yeah, that was a great trip. So there, it's always uh, exciting and sad to see all that, but yep. boy, it's beautiful country. Like so a different the, bland. <laughs> the the battery people are rubbing their hands in glee about all the newly exposed land in Iceland that they are in Greenland that they can uh, start mining operations on. They hope. Oh no! It's a uh. you know, global warming makes it easier to get the materials to convert to electric batteries to stop global warming. Uh, yes. Yes. Oh boy. Did, did you read about that young man? I think he's 17 year old high school student who is uh, he's working on some kind of a, a real uh, state of the art innovation with, uh, with uh, electric cars. Some kind of, a, a I don't know enough technically to even describe what I read, but he's been- No, I haven't. Oh, it's amazing. I, I, I can't remember where I picked up on it, it was somewhere online. But he is an incredible young man. My gosh, it sounds like he's really come up with something they said. So I don't know if it has to do with batteries or what it does. I think it has something to do with the engine itself. Mm. Anyway, so we're a little early. Yeah, no, oh, it's, no it's, it's actually on time now. It's yeah, now it is, yeah. Uh, so I don't think Ryan can make it. He let us know ahead of time. Um, I'm text. I just texted Tam. I know Heidi was planning to make it because I she responded to the group text. Um, and so did Jerry. Hi, Jerry. All right, while well that is while people are coming on board, I'm gonna go ahead and open the agenda document. <laughs> I'm sick of that. 
Hello, John and others. I'm remote and I don't know how long I can stay with you. Um, if someone else can also take minutes, I really appreciate it this time. Oh, okay, great. Uh, I'm, I'm starting the minutes now. Any but, volunteers? Um, okay, thanks. Any volunteers to uh, take minutes? Hey, if it's okay with you, Jerry, I'm going to go ahead and mute you. Well, I'm I'm. Um, okay, and then, sorry, Jerry, I went ahead and muted you because it was kind of loud with the background noise. But if you need to uh, talk, you can hit the unmute button, and then. Uh, yeah, it looks like Ryan isn't going to be here. And here's the agenda. It's actually online. Does any uh, does anybody not have the agenda? Oh, hi, Heidi. Hi. Uh, so let's see. Does anybody not have the agenda? I have it. I have it. I have uh, it. So let's see, I sent a text around, but I'm going to guess that, uh, let's see. Didn't, I didn't hear from Tam. Um, there we go. Heidi will be there. Heidi's here. Phil's here. Jerry is here. And nobody else responded to my text. Uh, so, so there are eight people in the committee. So we need to have at least five people here, or is it four people? I think it's five. <clears throat> well, we have we have five people, um, but I think. Uh, oh. No, we don't. We we have nine people. I didn't. Um, there are eight people in this text thread, but there's also Sally. I just didn't have her phone number, so I didn't add her to the text thread. I haven't seen her on why uh, online for a while. So there are actually nine people in the committee. So uh, four people are missing. So we have a majority. Does that qualify? It does. All right, cool. I think so. All right, well then let's get started. Um, let's see, I can go ahead and share my screen. And <clears throat> let me turn on all right so uh let's do a quick roll call so oh first of all who is going to be taking it would you be able to take notes heidi yes okay thanks so and i and i'm taking some john okay great i'll be able to uh, to put them together thanks Jerry. Uh, uh, okay so uh, let's go ahead and call to order. The time is 106. And the roll call. Uh, have, sorry, let me go ahead and mute you again, if that's okay with you. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do a roll call. So we've got John and Mimi and Phil and Heidi and Jerry. Uh, right. We have no guests and no uh, nobody from the town. Uh, let's see. Let's start by approving the minutes. So I'll scroll down to the minutes. Which I'll be are... back in a second. Okay, no problem. So these are the minutes from the prior uh, meeting. And uh... I approve the, the minutes as written. Okay, great. Anyone want to second that? Second. All right. Anybody, uh, let, let's uh, do a vote. Aye. Aye. All right, any nays? 
Okay, so I'll go ahead and uh, let's mark that as approved. Uh, all right, new business. All right, so uh, in subsequent to our last meeting, I did get an email return uh, from uh, Cindy. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do you again. Um, so Jerry, sorry, uh, Cindy mentioned in her email that we had a deficit of 400 and some odd, $468 or something like that. And uh, that, so I dug into it and there were two things that came from that. Um, and by the way, that was, I think, even before we did the kids movie night. So, um, but Jeremy assured us that he would find a way to solve that problem. Turns out he didn't need to yes. because we are in very good shape because what happened is, so Ryan Breen's band, uh, Windy Hill, they did a, a third concert. So you remember they did a, a concert a year ago, about a year and a half ago, beginning of summer last year, um, Brian, Ryan Breen did a concert and um, then Ryan also uh did a concert as part of PV Palooza uh, this past summer. And then he also participated as the band, uh, which was in the recent town picnic. So there have been three shows, but the town picnic is not our budget. That's Parks and Rec. And so Cindy, understandably, uh, took that amount and subtracted it from our budget. Um, and so that was a mistake that was that has subsequently been backed out or i've asked for that amount to be backed out i'm sure they'll agree because it, um i talked with john about that and he um so that was fine so that so that's a correction to the budget that's and, great news yeah it is great news and the other thing is is that i finally got a list of people who had actually donated and sponsored pv palooza and there was a over six thousand dollars missing um and so I have followed up uh, with each of the people who uh, hadn't made payments. And uh, it was kind of embarrassing to have waited this long, but I had no idea because I hadn't been getting return emails on asking what money was in the fund, what was in the fund. Anyway, we've recovered $6,000 from that. So anyway, we're about, we have a balance of something like $8,000. It might be closer to 7,500 somewhere in that range, because I don't know whether Phil's latest expenses, he had a bunch of expenses related to printing that were recently submitted. Yeah, I haven't, still haven't turned in the, the expense oh, report. Yeah, go ahead and do that as soon as possible. So that yep. we, how much is that all in? Um, I think it's about 1700 bucks. No, it was 954 for the, um, the, uh, summer concert series, and I think it was around 800 for um, PV Palooza. Oh, so, yeah, definitely get that stuff submitted. If you have any issues, I'll, I'll prioritize getting that pushed through. Um, and the town uh, wants us to do sort of invoice-based uh, stuff for bigger amounts, uh, which is going to significantly cramp our style because we have this <laughs> very sort of on-demand way of going and getting printing done um and we just use our credit card uh, and but then somebody has to go uh pay for it um but uh i say we just continue doing it that way until i really get in trouble um because <laughs> trying to go get i mean the rate at which things move is just too painful yeah, yeah. We're, we're, i mean uh, we have stuff to do, right? So uh, I say we continue this. I mean, it was the same thing with uh, with Heidi. Heidi, you paid with your credit card that four hundred and something dollar amount. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if that's in there or not. So, but let's say let's all add all that up and assume it's not in there. So that's like two thousand. So we have we maybe we have somewhere around five thousand dollars in the budget, which is great because um, we thought we were broke. Uh, and I think that's good to have as a buffer for PV Palooza because we don't know uh, how, you know, there's a, been a pretty significant shift uh, in the economy, <laughs> uh, if you haven't noticed. And uh, <laughs> people's mood in terms of sponsoring events 
might significantly change from last year. So I think it's good to have a buffer for PV Palooza. Um, so I'm I'm happy that that we've got that. Um, so the point is, is that our budget woes are over. Um, so that's good news. Uh, I uh, think, you know, basically we're back to probably being limited by time rather than budget. Um, and so, uh, but it'll be good to have that cushion as we move along. Um, so anything else about the budget we should talk about? All right. Uh, so, oh, hi, Sue. I didn't say hi yet. How are you? Uh, you're muted. We can't hear you right now because you're muted. Um, I can, here, I'll ask to unmute and hopefully that's going to show a button that you can just click. Do you see a button to... There we go. Ah, there okay. we go. Nice All right. You. Thank you. Nice to see you. Thank you. How are you feeling? Better, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Sorry I was late. I was in an important town council meeting. Oh, okay. <laughs> I guess, have you heard? We're, 20 votes might decide this election. Oh, wow. Is it that close? Mm -hmm. My goodness. Is that for, that's for town council. And who are the two... Uh, Mary has 20 more votes than Craig. Oh, okay. It'll be decided at 4 30, I guess. Hughes, right? Yes. Craig Hughes, not Craig Taylor. Craig, Craig Hughes. Yeah, Craig Taylor's in. So um so sorry I'm late, but it was important. <laughs> oh, interesting. Thanks for the update on that. Um and so uh we've Let's see, the, the next thing is the update on the kids' movie night. So nice work, Heidi, on, uh, on working with Ryan and the whole team, actually, on making that happen. I wasn't in town for it, but uh, maybe you can give us an update on it. I also was out of town. Um, I know that Ryan was there, and Tamara did the bulk of the work other than getting the license. Um, and as far as I know, it it went well. Okay, good. Uh, there were there were a few photos taken by by Ryan and I forget who it was or Jerry. Um, so we have a little record of it. Okay. Um, it was it got cold at the end, and a few families left before I took photos, but. Uh, Ryan's photos were much better than mine because I was at Dana Breen's up right up to that started and then I got there. But um, the kids that were there really enjoyed it and the parents were very complimentary. That's great. That's great. Uh, and do we have any take homes or learnings from the event? Um, I Go ahead, Jerry. No, no, I was just going to say we need to advertise it um, more pre yes. previous to the date. We need to be more proactive in being prepared ahead of time. And I think the weekend was not the best weekend to have chosen because there was other stuff, a lot of other stuff going on. Okay. Yeah, so it's, it's hard to find a time when, when there isn't a lot going on, but, um, but I think that's a good point. Um, we did, I was not able to find out if we had any money for promotion. So it was basically just word of mouth and, you know, PV forum and the town newsletter and things like that. Also, uh, Jeremy had suggested that I work with the schools, but I had a really, really hard time um, with communication with with the folk there and I don't you know I just don't know any of those people because I didn't raise my kids here so um so that was a limitation and uh if we do this again I would like to have more help with you know how to get the word out best way might be to start with walking into the district office over at uh Florida Madeira and um uh, they can put the word out to the principals at Corner Madeira and Ormondale. 
Yeah, and that's exactly what I tried to do and just didn't get any traction. Mm. Okay, so that's a good learning. Uh, so ne next for our next event, um, it sounds like number one, we might, might want to do it uh, a little bit earlier in the year so that we've got, so it doesn't get cold in the evening. Um, it's more likely, you know, earlier in the year to have something that, uh, I don't know, June, August. Yeah. Uh, you know, so somewhere during the summer months uh, might be better. Except that, John, the, the problem with that is that the sun stays up really long during the summer months and it's you oh. have to start the movie too late for little kids. So that's sort of a, a compromise. Oh, right. Good point. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. No, no, it's, it's a very good point uh, because kids' uh, bedtime tends to be, you know, parents want their kids home by i don't know what, eight or something yeah yeah and going much past that isn't going to work but if we do it earlier yeah that's a good point i hadn't considered um okay so maybe that is the right time of year um and then well um uh, september though is usually significantly warmer than october would would september timing work have worked it would there, I mean, if there's a lot going on in mid-October, there's even more going on in September, yeah, you know? True. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, maybe we need to have more discussion about that. Um, well, we're going to have more time to plan this for next time. And we'll also have more money to promote it. Um, yeah. because you know, we looks like we're in good shape funding wise. So, um, yeah. Okay, so in terms of take homes, uh, the idea is we want to promote more, start the advertising early, figure out the best way to promote it. Maybe we do a poster like we do for some of the music events or whatever. Um, but um, yeah, cool. Uh, let's see, anything else on the uh, kids' movie night? No, that's a good wrap up. All right, cool. So Planning for PV Palooza. Uh, I don't have a ton of updates except that uh, we do have a date. That's June 10th again. Um, I am going to bet that there'll be more bands interested this summer because, um, you know, we were just coming out of COVID at that time and uh, there was a lot of uncertainty going into the previous one. Uh, plus, it was our first one. Um, I'm going to bet that we'll have more bands. And uh, so we might have to uh, have shorter performances with quicker sh um, changeovers. So last year, it was one hour uh, performances with a half hour uh, between each band. Um, maybe we could do 45 minutes with 15 minutes between each band, which would you know, allow us significantly more bands. Uh, but something along those lines, um, or maybe some bands are 45 minutes and other bands are an hour. Um, actually this past one, the last band up, which was Crim, uh, was an hour and a half. Um, so we should be able to, um, you know, come up with a plan to make, the, uh, the event accommodate more, um, musicians. Um, cause I'm, I'm going to bet there's going to be more. Um, in fact, I, I know for a fact there have been several uh, people, including uh, a couple of students at Berkeley College of Music who are classmates of my son, uh, who actually are from Portola Valley, who are also interested in performing. I don't know if anybody knows Grace Benneker, but uh, um, and then uh, Samantha, I forget the last name. So <laughs> there could be, but believe it or not, this year, in my son's year, there were like four students from Portola Valley Woodside uh, going to Berkeley College of Music, which is just a bizarre coincidence. But uh, uh, anyway, there could be a couple of those and other uh, local uh, musicians as well. So uh, it's likely going to be a bigger and more complicated, sorry, an even bigger and even more complicated event than last summer. The good news is that we will go into this with a lot more experience uh, than we had this past one. So um, 
we still need to make that spreadsheet of all the things that we need to remember to do. Um, I still haven't gotten around to doing that, but um, uh, I was actually hoping to be able to show that plan to you guys this time, but didn't didn't get around to that. But hopefully for next time, we still have plenty of time. Um, so that's PV Palooza. Anything else on PV Palooza? Um, we, we will have Greg this time for PV Palooza. Remember last time he was supposed to do it, but ended up having a good kid's graduation. Um, so, but he did find a, a, a substitute, uh, but we're going to have Greg uh, do all of our events this next summer. Uh, Greg, he, Greg who? Oh, sorry, Greg um, Poston. And he's the guy who did all three of the summer concerts uh, and he also was the guy who did sound for us for uh, PV Live Revive. Okay. So I want to awesome. talk to him at some point uh, before the next PV Blues because there were a lot of three second to 20 second audio dropouts in the stuff that got recorded at PV Blues. Yeah. Well, I, I, I read your email about that, and um, that was unfortunate. Um, uh, so, uh it's you know what when they when we asked them to do the recording they said just keep in mind that unless we hire a, another technician whose job it is to fully 100 percent sort of man the uh, recording that uh that it, that it'll be a best efforts basis because their priority is to get the live sound right and the recording which is not live uh gets second uh, priority, but the things that you were running into seemed more fundamental than that. I mean, I, yeah, I mean, um, and I've done these things myself before, and um, it's true that you always blow a couple recordings towards the beginning and towards the end. But uh, once it's going, it's it's humming along, and you don't really need to take care of it. So I told them to not bother, and plus it would have been significantly more expensive to add another team member uh, to, for the recording. Uh, so we did kind of get a disclaimer on that, but it seems worse. The result you got was worse than it should have been. That's for sure. But uh, we'll be able to talk to to Greg about that um, for next mm -hmm. next event. He's got really modern equipment. So uh, let's see. All right. Well, if there's nothing else for PV Palooza, we can move on to planning for the summer concert series. And uh, we have three dates. <laughs> I don't remember what those three dates are. Uh, so, so PV Palooza is June 10th. Uh, Summer Concert Series 1 is July, August, September. And we picked the three dates, and I have promptly forgotten them. Does anybody? Oh, that's right. They're in the previous meeting minutes. Uh, no, oh, there we go. Oh, there they are. They're in the previous meeting minutes, July 13th, August 17th, and September 14th. Um, so I don't think I've announced those three dates to the town yet. Um, so I'll just send a, a blanket email to the town when this meeting is over to uh, carry um, and let them know that those are the dates that we have planned. And I don't foresee any problems, but um, in terms of band selection for um, the summer concert series, uh, just as a reminder for PV Palooza, you know, they're very local, meaning PV Woodside type local, in terms of one or more of the band members. For um, And they also has, have to be, you know, a good band. So you don't just apply and get in, because especially this year, there's going to be so many attending that, you know, that there will be sort of some informal uh, screening process. But then for the summer concert series, uh, we, you know, get, we, we fish from a, a wider pool. We go anywhere that's a, that, that doesn't require us to pay for travel, <laughs> right? So if somebody wants to come from Santa Cruz or even Sacramento, like the Gold Souls last year, that's fine. But, you know, probably further than that, we wouldn't be doing because we're not going to pay for lodging. Um, and the budget for that is, 
roughly around 2,000, 2,500 per band, just for the band fee. Uh, so we're tending to get a little bit, you know, more talented bands. Um, and uh, so I've started uh, looking at, at bands and uh, what I typically do is I go to a couple of clubs that I know play music that we can afford. <laughs> In other words, they're a small enough club that they're hiring talent that's roughly the same uh, budget that we can pay for. And they're, but they're clubs that I like. One of them is called Boom Boom Room in San Francisco. And uh, then I'll look at who's playing, who's played recently or who's slated to play soon. And I'll go look at the corresponding website. Um, I'll confirm that the person to contact for booking them is one of the band members because if we have to contact a booking agency, we probably can't afford them. That's a good indicator that they're too expensive for us. But if we're contacting still a band member, like the drummer, for example, uh, then it's the case that we can probably afford them. And so if I like them after having watched their YouTube videos, um, then I'll send them an email. And if anybody is interested in joining in that process, um, I'm more than willing to, uh, to, to share that. Um, I totally enjoy it, so it's it's not a problem. But if anybody wants to to join in that, I think uh, Ryan, uh, who's not here, but Ryan was involved uh, last year, and he actually came up with uh, one of the bands, which was the Joint Chiefs, and they were they were really good as well. So, uh, yeah, that's my process, uh, and. Let's see. Anything else on the um, on the summer concert series? Okay, I'm gonna try to come up with a couple of um, candidate bands between now and the next um, next uh, cultural arts committee meeting. Uh, and what I'd like to do is by the end of the year have it all dialed in what the, who the bands are gonna be. Um, and you know, have verbal agreements in place with amounts and so on. Uh, we already know how much our audio costs. It's kind of, it's 900 and something dollars per show, 950 or something. PV Palooza for the audio is much more expensive uh, because of the complexity of that event. But for each of these, it's around $900. Um, maybe 950, something like that. Uh, let's see, sued, well, before I move on to Sue, is there anything else regarding the summer concert series? All right, local artists collection and photography. Sue, it's, a, it's okay. I I think I was unmuted, or muted rather. Um, we talked about having some local art at the Palooza. I tried to ask you while that was on the agenda. Yes. Yes. Uh, that's a, gr a great suggestion. I, okay, I, so shall we pursue that as well? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Uh, hold on. I'm not able to see folks. Something is... Oh, there we go. You can't uh, see me? Now I can. Okay. Sorry. I had to switch to... Sorry, I got cut off and I had to switch to my iPad, so... Uh, Okay, the um, photography. I wrote a beautiful letter to the town. I can say that because somebody helped me. I've had several compliments on it. I handed it in when was told it was handed in. It was recorded. That was December a year ago. I haven't heard from the town. We need a new town council. Um, <laughs> so, um, amazingly, just today, I got a guy who will catalog help me put it all together, keep it recorded for history purposes. So my thought right now is that we would take the photography because that can be uh, duplicated should anything happen and try to put a nice um, showing in the town hall that could be there fairly permanently. I'm just thinking start with black and white. We could do those canvas reproductions as well. 
And if they're taken or damaged, we can reproduce them because we'll have the original. So I'm kind of thinking of that as a, as a concrete beginning, but then we'll have years and years of collecting and, and being gifted with wonderful photos that will go into the archives and slideshows. Oh, I mentioned this and the guy just loved it, is that we would have a screen that could be seen from outdoors, mounted in a building, but and that constant slideshows of our photographs could be on that without any, um, anyway, he loved that. So those I are- I worry two. about screens as a theft target, uh, you know, late night when everything is closed. I know, yeah. That's exactly what I said to him. Well, what about maintenance? <laughs> well, I mean, here's, here's the thing. Some that bulletproof be... glass. But um, anyway, that that's kind of, uh, we played with that for several years. And I anyway, it might be a, a fun way to start as well or work into that. But, but for starters, we would do the photographs in the town hall a, and the town center town building the community room because the library is pretty full and schoolhouse is pretty full and then we can rotate them out i think i could do one of all the photographers that i've invited and um we can rotate them but i maybe i'll hear from the town next year yeah so uh we can definitely follow up with the town on that one. If you want to uh, send an email to, uh, I mean, did you send it to Jeremy or who did you address the email to? Oh, I sent it to the all the council, their names. Oh, okay. And to Jeremy and to uh, and what the library. What was the um don't know why i included him but i did what was it's the been a year ago but sharon Han hanlon helped me do it and told me that she had sent it in just um, before she returned i'll help you sue thank you jeremy it'll be fun yes okay great and what was what was the action that you were searching that you were asking for what the what was, what were you asking for what oh, was asking for their that that we as a committee had come up with this concept and we would like to pursue it. And I didn't say blessings, but asked for their, um, you know, uh, support. And given that it's a also historical with Nancy Lund, oh god, that it's right. a it, it would go into the archives forever. I mean, it'll be part of our town history forever. And we'll just, we'll just rotate, pull out new, new photos and, and get new photographers as well. I'm hoping some kids will get involved. Yeah. Um, and I think it's a great idea. And, uh, yeah. Your idea. And then maybe we'll build a new building to put them in. <laughs> uh. <laughs> yeah. So. so have you gotten any uh, estimates on printing costs per or photo like a, a photo no i bet are they expensive phil uh, well i don't i don't know uh john and i have been using precision graphics as a source for posters and i think they concentrate on trade shows so they would probably have pretty good uh pricing for photos and and mounting uh okay. but that's just one source then there's staples um and i don't have a third source in mind Okay, I, I, um, I might get original photos from the photographer, in which case I'd be more careful. I would show for sure, but I wouldn't just leave them there forever. Mm -hmm. What I was thinking is that whatever we did, and I, I was thinking digital would be a little less expensive um, and all kind of, clean and matching frames and um and if someone gave us an original i think i'd put it in the library or the or the town hall 
we could make a copy of it to put in the um, community room. I just, mm -hmm. just because it's rented out, something could happen, but we can always replace it. Yeah, as long as most photography is digital these days. And yeah. if it's not already digital, it can be scanned. Right. So that, and that would be part of also whatever we are given is that would we'd scan that. And then I think I've got the guy to do that for me now. So when I, whenever I hear from the town, I'll let you know. <laughs> okay. Sure. Uh, I, but I, I don't think we need to uh, wait for the town unless there's. No, not to, not to do it, not to start collecting, but we need a place to put it. Okay, so what you're the ask to the town was for a place. Was, to... Yeah, what, what oh, how can we promote this? How can we show it? How can we, um, yeah. And the schoolhouse is pretty full. Mm -hmm. I mean, there could be. Maybe could we, could we as a committee say, this is what we would like to do and just outline where it would be, how we would promote it, that kind of thing, and make it easy for them to say, sure, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I mean, where, mm -hmm. where would we put it? I mean, that's why I'm thinking at first, let's just put it in the community room and, and the town hall. The, uh, so are, uh, are the walls in the town hall empty? The, as you walk in, as you used to be able to walk in three years ago to the desk there, they have the wildflower prints from Herb Dangler which maybe could be rotated. Maybe we could highlight photography for a while and those could be moved. Mm -hmm. But to the room to the left, which was a conference room, but now is being open like yesterday for voting. And I think you walk in there and ring the bell if you need to see somebody in town hall. Have you been there lately? Yeah. So, so the you've... original front doors have paper on them, so you can't see in. So you have to go in that room, in that conference room. And yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure we could use that. How many people would see it? I don't know, unless unless they kept it open like they're doing now. And then the community hall has, as I remember, one large blank wall, uh, which is often used for. Uh, you know, projection at various events. Um, but there's a screen that comes the, down. So if we the to... screen comes down along like where the storage room is, the mm -hmm. screen comes mm -hmm. down in front of the doors of the square. The wall from the kitchen out to the patio, it would be the back of the soccer field is blank. I bet they'd want to keep it blank. And if you had a wedding, you might not want the photographs. I was kind of thinking as you come in to clean that up, that kind of little entry hall, clean that up, maybe go around the corner. There's another blank wall there. And then just as you come in, there's another kind of blank wall that, so it'd be on the two walls, put three walls in the entry, and then maybe on the, um, I guess there's support walls. So that, that's very- And we did this years ago. We went through this cultural arts was Jerry, were you on it? Of trying to find some means of a hanging oh, system. Oh, you were. Right. Yeah, years ago we've come. Oh, yeah, so you can, um, God, look through the minutes for that. But I'm sure they've come up with cool well, hanging I, systems. But I think um, in terms of a concrete ask, um, if we were to take, big pictures, just iPhone pictures of the walls that we want uh -huh. to up on and say, we just need to go ahead. Uh, we think it would be a great initiative for these reasons to put the art here, very specific. And then if there are no objections, then we'll figure out how to, you know, fund the getting of the frames and the mounting of the prints and the mm. thing around that. And then we can have that as a permanent exhibit. Um, and then maybe your idea of rotating 
uh, the art that's in the uh, town hall, but you know, come up with a, a concrete set of asks for um, what what's being approved. And then if they come back and they say, you know, your, your point about weddings, you know, we, we don't want it to be, you know, but they might not, they might come back and say, oh, sure, that sounds mm -hmm. great. It's a great way to take yeah. this building and, and uh, show off local, local um, art. Mm -hmm. and, and they'd all be beautiful. So even if you had a wedding, it'd be, it'd be cool. But the thing is now you can't put anything on those walls because they'd be damaged. So um, even a wedding or a party or anything like that. So um, God, did we even think about a rollout? I don't know. We went through so many different so what would be damaged? The wall or the art? Oh, no. I mean, years ago, we went through so many different um, concepts. They were, concerned about, they were concerned about the wall. Yeah. As it stands now, you can't put anything on those walls. Right. But these would be permanent. They'd be ours. They'd be mounted high enough, you know, that wouldn't end so we've already been nicely. Told <clears throat> I just already... can't think of anywhere else in the town that we can accommodate it. and we have to start it. We but can't but just not... go There's years a... and years with doing nothing just because we've got a stupid wall. So, okay. I'll, so I'll... hold on, hold on. Uh, Mimi, did I just understand that they've already told us that we can't put art up on the wall? Right. No. That we can't on, on the wall itself. It has to come from some uh, right at the court, you know, the ceiling and the wall, there's some kind of a way to fasten the hanging oh, from that, the wall rather than the, uh, I mean, the ceiling rather than the wall. Okay, so where the, where the ceiling and the wall meet, there's some way to, I think like there's a, some kind of a hanging uh, apparatus. A, a strip that would go across the top of the wall, the top where the ceiling and the wall met, and yeah. then hangers, like a wreath hanger that would come down on which you could put right. uh, the art. That was more for an art show. It's been well, many this... years. They might they might let us put our own art, our own permanent collection, historical art as a permanent collection. Okay, we but the to... hanging problem yeah. is still the hanging problem will still be the same whether it's but, yeah. photos or art. But there's a there's a difference between asking permission to temporarily hang art for the purposes of a temporary exhibit and then behind you'll have these holes left versus asking to put the effort into selecting and curating art that is appropriate for permanent uh use. right that's right uh so maybe um if we say look this time we're not asking for temporary but for permanent mm -hmm. uh, maybe mm -hmm. if we ask for permanent mounting they will give us the go-ahead um to yeah. ask the wall itself um, and then we can assure them that, you know, the appropriate curation and selection will be put in place, knowing that it's going to be there permanently. Mm -hmm. um, and then of course, we might want them to have the ability to veto any pieces of art that, uh, that uh, are selected by the committee. But I, I think if we ask something uh, concrete like that with a, uh, you know, changing it to, from being a temporary type of scenario to being a permanent scenario, they might give a different answer. So, um, right. I, I, I bet this council doesn't even know that 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 we'd gone through all that either. So yeah, that's true. We have more institutional memory than they do. So we, yeah, we're at advantage. <laughs> yeah, I just I just think it's time and it'll we need we need to get it done. I mean, we could put up another whole wall in front of that wall if they want to save the wall. But um, uh, given how many years now, how old is it? 13, 14 years, and it's still all in pretty good shape. No one's damaged it. Um, I think we can take another look at it. All right. I see the re I see the reason for the rule. Yeah, I, I get it as well. Um, so, okay. Okay. The other thing is the the um, oh no, that wouldn't work. That wall that comes out that wouldn't work. Right. Yeah. Okay. okay. We've got, um, are, so any other updates related to the um, exhibit? No, but I'll start looking for local artists for the Palooza. Did any of you go to um, Jan Schachter's house this weekend? I, I was not able to. 
Okay. They, she has a lovely group. She has a beautiful house and garden and it's all out in her, in the back garden <clears throat> and her patio. And, and it's a really nice group of people. And I would start with them. If that's all we had, I'd be very happy. But Sue, but, that's ceramics. That's not art as we were talking about. What, isn't that right? No, no, no. I'm talking about the, uh, now I'm talking about Palooza, back to the Palooza. Oh, okay. 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 Let's okay. do this uh, for, um, Heidi and Jerry, who are taking notes, uh, there's actually two subjects under item number E. One of them, one of them is the um, temporary question around just. Uh, Jerry, I'm going to mute you again. Sorry about that. Um, so, for one of the questions under local artist collection is around PV Palooza, which is a temporary exhibit. And then mm -hmm. the question that came up during our discussion was the permanent e exhibit. Uh, the latter one involved an email to the town and it sounds like we're gonna go back and um, give that another shot with a, a concrete ask. And then in terms of the uh, temporary one, I think that's a new idea, the one of, of putting up, It's it's not a, a new idea to have local artists uh, photography and collection and exhibit it, but it's a new idea to have that part of PV Palooza. I love yes. it. Yeah. Uh, so let's, um, so the, the action item on that one is uh, simply to uh, think about the, you know, what the costs might be to uh, mount those and exhibit them outdoors at the PV Palooza. Um, we can find out from Greg, for example, who's going to be doing the audio. Can he hoist a outdoor quality, uh, high brightness monitor that would be a slideshow of some of the local art that you guys would curate? We can, you know, come up with all kinds of different ideas. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, what I was thinking we had talked about, and it was, remember, it was Joy Deezer's daughter, Piper, yeah. as well as our maintenance guy, um, What's Justin. his name? Not Chuck. Chuck? Justin. What's his name? Um, Justin. Both both said while they were sitting at Palooza, gee, it'd be great to have some art to kind of stroll in between bands. So that's what I'm talking about is having an art fair that during the Palooza. And they, they'd be local artists and they would be responsible for their own tents and their own equipment and their own oh, everything. Great. Yeah, great. and they just would be scattered around the the town great so idea. after a band played you could go see them and yeah. go watch another band and yeah so we can open that up to any uh type of art whether it be uh poetry or photography yes. or yes art or it, sculpture there's uh, it'd be great one of my it just needs it just needs a monitor i mean you can't bring in you know uh somebody that you've not known or seen the art that's the only thing that i would be cautious of yeah. if you all see a great if you all know and see a great artist let's invite them but i think we have enough we don't have to do any publicity we have enough fairly local and they're they're responsible for all their own stuff we don't have to do anything other than tell them where they can be that's great. Um, now there and it shouldn't cost anything more. You just add a line on the posters on the publicity that we've got an art fair too. That's a great idea. And then- the Yeah, first... okay, good. Yeah. I, that's what I was trying to get to yeah. when you were on the Palooza, but I was muted. So, um, and then as you know, I asked you last time for your blessing and thank you to do an art fair. It's a little late to do something this year for Christmas and it needs a chair. I did talk to some of the local artists and they love it. They're not able to do it. Three three people that could do it normally can't do it. I can't do it. Um, so we won't do anything for Christmas, but we'll save it for the Palooza. We'll build it up and save it for Palooza. Might have another one in between, but I doubt it. Because <clears throat> those artists sometimes need a few months to get all their work together. I mean, okay. to continue getting their work together. So um, if we had one in the spring, but I doubt it. It's usually summer and fall. And then their big thing is, is uh, Christmas time for gifts. 
So um, anyway, we'll so I'll begin to look for uh, for the Palooza, and I'll let you know okay. who we've so, got. So when you say gifts, are you saying that uh, we would be allowing them to sell their wares uh, on site there? At the Palooza, yeah. Oh, okay, got it. Okay, cool. And um, Heidi, let's uh, add to your list since there's going to be a potentially selling of items. Whether there's any uh, regulatory, uh, I don't know, licensing or any. Right. Okay. Mo most most of the art fairs, they charge them or they give a percentage. I don't see any need for that in this. No. Had I done an art fair, say in November. I would have charged them enough to pay for cleanup. Oh, right. That's fair enough. Um, and whatever publicity. When we used to do the thing at the Priory, well, we used to do it at the town and then it got too cold and then we went to the Priory, our art fair. I think we charged 20% of the takings and it went to open space for whom, by whom we were never thanked. And they could choose a school, they could choose the school or open space, or at one point in time, we did the creek. That sounds really complicated. I mean, I- Yeah, no, well, that's why you don't want to be chair of something like that when you have to, to so for this- <laughs> It's complicated enough to- I, wouldn't char I don't think we, ch maybe we would charge them 10 bucks for but, cleanup. But Sue, Sue um, I don't think you are, uh, let's see. Um, we're not trying to re reproduce the Priory show. We're talking about no. it art only, not not little goods, little jewelry, little tchotchkes. Right. So it's mo it's mostly art, right? Uh, you mean for the Palooza? Yes. I don't know what we'll get. I don't know who will be interested. I don't know what we'll get. I love the idea. Well, that's part, that's also part of the reason I do local artists, local, because I have the right of ref refusal. Yeah, let's do local and uh, just like the rest of PV Palooza. Um, yeah. And I think it's a great idea. I I am very much, uh, I sort of love the idea of having art on show. Not yes. thrilled if it's going to be leather keychains and other tchotchkes. I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. But I think if we keep it local, it's it's probably not going to be much of that. I mean, I can just say we're full or something like that. Yeah. However, when we did do the thing, we had a couple of local kids who made things and we always included them. We didn't charge them. Yeah, of course. Okay, that's great. And those were keychains and plastic bracelets and we all bought <laughs> from them. And <laughs> I kind of think I so if I get a local kid, I'm going to have to include. Yeah. But they all sat together and pulled that's their fine. sources. And so if we get those, we'll have to include them okay cool so we have uh i do have a hard stop in five minutes but there's one yeah. more thing that i forgot to mention when we were talking about pv palooza um and that is assuming that we're done with the photography stuff um if so let me jump over and show you this is a one drive that phil made um phil if you wouldn't mind emailing this around to the team so these are all of the videos that were made and Phil put an enormous amount. Oh of my God. To make it. So first of all, Phil received, I think, uh, two. Uh, anyway, he went and edited all these films to chop them at just the right place and to mix in the audio because the audio that was on the video cameras was terrible. The audio off the soundboard was good, but unfortunately the a uh, guy who made those recordings for some reason kept putting in dropouts. I mean, not intentionally, but there were dropouts. And so every one of those dropouts required him to resync the audio it's because obviously the audio has to line up perfectly. So when the guy's hand hits the guitar, the sound comes, uh, everything has to line up perfectly. And Phil put a, I can't even imagine the number of hours, Phil, that you put into this. I unleashed my obsessive compulsive tendencies. Yeah. I'm guessing, uh, you know, part of that was spouse, a spousal to-do list because your your spouse is using this for a certain event. So yeah, <laughs> yeah so uh, Alec Little and Pathetic Honey got into the climate concert. Yeah, which is cool. Um, 
And so basically I've sent this around to all the artists and I'm sure you saw the email, Phil, and uh, they're, I'm sure very happy about the fact that they can go download these. I'll mention that at least for me, I mean, I have a very high bandwidth connection, but for me, I can't play this video from here. I have to download it first. Um, mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't recommend guys to select all these and download them at once. I would download them once at a time because these are big movies. Uh, yeah, these these are typically around two gigabytes each. Uh, I I think I've got smaller uh, versions up also. Uh, so I'll I'll try to send out the link to uh, both the high file size and the low file size versions. Oh, that would be great. Uh, Where the low? <laughs> <laughs> so what's what's cool about these videos is that um, I think. Tam, if I'm not mistaken, is an avid. Hold on, my dog's going crazy. Just a second. Sorry about that. Uh, Tam, I think I understood that she is an avid videographer, uh, amateur digital videographer. In other words, she she likes to make videos by, you know, putting together snippets of videos and and so on. Uh, I do it from time to time as well. Um, so maybe Tam and I could take a crack at this, but what I'd like to do is take a few seconds for, uh, of video uh, from a couple of these artists. And uh, the, the, the thing that takes time is curating. It's like which few seconds from which few artists, but anyway, take some time to curate and to make kind of a video montage of what happened in the 2022, the first PV Palooza, and then use that as a promo video that we can use for two purposes, one for promoting the event itself, uh, but earlier than that for doing the fundraising. Mm. Uh, yeah, cool. And uh, it's it, it's a ton of work. I mean, I know how much work already went into this, into <laughs> this. Uh, but uh, let's see if Tam, uh, I'll ping her to see if she, uh, would be willing to give a shot. Um, and uh, I tried downloading all, I made the mistake of selecting everything and trying to download it. And it, <laughs> it actually filled up my drive and brought my computer to its knees. Um, so that was a mistake, uh, but uh, I'll give it another shot this, this weekend. Uh, I think I might actually have some time to, to play with this kind of thing next week. Uh um, Making Probably a, a better idea if you uh, if you have a big USB stick, uh, I can just copy it and uh, use sneaker net. Oh uh, yeah, that's that's true too. Um, well, let's see if I can save ourselves the drive. I'll I'll just see tonight if I can go go ahead and download a, a few of them at a time uh, to see how it goes. I have an external drive I can download too instead of trying to put it on my main drive. Um, okay. Anyway, we're up at two o'clock now. Uh, so I, I wanted to thank uh, Phil, by the way, uh, for his efforts and all this, because I'm not sure people understand how much work in, went into that. So thank you, Phil. And um, yeah, you're very welcome. And also, uh, I think I already said it, but I'll say it again. Thank you to uh, Heidi and uh, Ryan uh, and anyone else who was involved uh, in the um, um, movie. It's movie. It's night. movie night. Tamara, Tamara, um, did a lot of work. Oh, yeah, that's right. Tam, Tam was very involved. Um, and then Jerry, as always, and Sue and Mimi, all your guys' help is always appreciated. So thanks for everything you guys do. Um, one other thing I'm realizing that this has to be quick because we're already one minute over, but um, I think we want to make sure that we have a committee that um, that attends regularly. So I want to, if, if we have uh, certain of the members who, who uh, aren't attending every time, we might want to consider um, making room for other members because the problem is that we get to meetings and we, there's always this question mark as to whether we've got a quorum or not. So um, I think you know everyone who's here is always pretty much here, with exceptions, and that's fine. Um, but uh, I think you know 
I think, does anybody have, uh, the, does anybody know Sally well enough to, to sort of ask her how she's doing? Yes. Who was, was that you, Sue? Uh, yes. Oh yeah. Can you reach out to Sue, sorry, to Sally to see? To S Sally, yeah. And um, her yeah, caretaker. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure she'll, she can't do it. So um, she just needs, to, does she, she needs to tell the town. Is that how it goes? Yeah, that, that would okay. be, the, yeah. Okay. And give her our best. Um, I'll drop a note in her mailbox and um, uh, hope and ask that she contact the town. Okay. And give her our best. So I uh, hope she's uh, doing okay. Um, and that's it, guys. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks John. Thanks, John. Thanks, all. Thanks. Bye. 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 Thank you.